Let's see. Hi, everybody. I think we're live now. Um, yeah, it looks like our participants are, are ticking up. So as everybody's joining in, I just want to say hello. Um, uh, my name is Kelly. I'm with the Office of Economic Development, specifically with the Colorado Office of Film, Television, and Media. And I just want to thank you for registering uh, for this webinar. This is our first in a series that we're doing. Um, and I just wanted to let you guys know that if you want to see the other ones that we have going on, you can go to coloradofilm.org slash webinar dash series. Uh, this webinar is also being recorded. So if you miss any part of it, you'll be able to go back later. We'll have it put up on our website for you to check out. And if you have any questions, I also want to let you guys know that at the bottom of your screens, you should be able to see there's a Q&A box. You can type in any questions that you have to the panelists at any point during the session, and they can take a look at them as they go along, or we might wait until the end to answer questions. So just keep that in mind, ask any questions that come to mind. And with that, I'm going to introduce Jim Janicek, uh, Julie Duro, and Jared Picune with Janicek Entertainment. So thanks. I'm going to take my video and my audio off now. All right. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you, everybody, and um, we really appreciate everybody joining us here today and through this difficult time. We know it's kind of a, a pain that everyone's going through, and that's why we put together this quick panel. Um, we, too, were faced with some, some pivoting uh, needed. Um, while some of our clients paused their business uh, with us, we operate a channel for Comcast 24-7, which cannot just pause itself. Um, we still had to keep it going and um, we were challenged with figuring out a way to do that. Uh, you know, and it, we feel like we've come up with some things that we're using that may be beneficial, hopefully, to some of you who have businesses that you want to try to keep production going. You might be able to pitch it to your clients as ways to keep uh, production going. So with that, just to kind of set you know, what we do, if those of you who are watching don't know, I thought I would play a uh, a quick sizzle of kind of our channel, just uh, I think it's like 60 seconds or so. That'll give you an idea of what we do um, for this particular client. Um, and then I'm going to turn it over to Julie and Jared, who work for me, who are incredibly uh, talented and are the ones who figured out how to make this pivot work. Um, so we were originally to 100% based in, you know, our production offices with all our media coming in uh, through our servers. So a typical, you know, production, uh, we didn't have a lot of remote other than we were shooting in Miami or other places around the country. We would pull material in and then do all of our editing and, and production in one place. Now we literally, that office is somewhat locked and closed and our server is the one that's doing a lot of the work while we're all tapping it remotely. So let me show you this, and forgive me if I don't get it right, I'm going to try to do the desktop share, which is where the share screen, and I will play this for you, okay? So let me open this first, and then I'm going to press share screen here, and we'll let you see what that looks like, and we'll go from there. Okay, stand by just a second here. Okay, I'm sharing the screen now. Uh, let's see, desktop share. Oh boy, looks like it's gonna make that a little difficult, but let's see. Um, zoom. Uh, okay, well, it looks like it's not gonna let me do that at the moment, so I've learned something about this. <laughs> so quickly, um, just about our, uh, our channel. It's kind of like Entertainment Tonight, uh, but for the Latino audiences. And we produce it on a weekly basis. It's a half an hour show that's hosted. Uh, and we feature clips, entertainment elements, interviews with celebrities, uh, and sports that is updated every day or every couple days with new sports events happening. Um, so it's basically a very, very uh, active production. Um, and so with that, I think I'm going to turn it over, Julie, to you and let you explain a little more. Julie, you're muted. Hello. <laughs> first, first time. First time, first caller. First, ho first time host. Um, okay, so... Uh, yeah, I'll provide a little more context about what goes into a show, Jim, if you end up being able to share that video 
know, just let me know and okay. can interrupt at any time. Um, so as Jim said, we're producing a weekly show and the elements that kind of go into it, just so, so you kind of know our starting point and, you know, our jumping off point was um, our show consists of... Uh, oh. Hey, Julie, I was actually able to get it now. Okay. Apologies. Good. Yeah. So folks, while we're on, forgive us for the, this. Again, it's kind of a learning experience on this. Uh, but this is a quick view of what we, uh, what we do. And then we'll pop right back to Julie. <laughs> Xfinity Latino, bringing you the best of Xfinity every week. Xfinity Latino is the only channel of its kind fully dedicated to bringing the best of Xfinity to all subscribers. Watch your boy body. Come in parents by family friendly entertainment. Plus, everyday helpful tips. Por eso hoy les voy a contar cómo hago para hablar español en la casa. Go ahead, make my day. And recommendations of the latest movie releases in their language of choice. Hola, amigos de Xfinity Latino. Each week, Xfinity Latino gives viewers an inside look to Xfinity's latest products and services. Now you can download shows and take them with you. And easy to follow tutorials. Presiona la A en tu remoto X1. En la cancha brings viewers the weekly sporting lineup. Tenemos un segmento repleto de opciones futboleras, basquetboleras, para que arranques el año por todo. And the excitement of world-class tournaments. Soy Canelo Álvarez. Hola, amigos de Xfinity. Watch the best of Xfinity every week. Just say, Xfinity Latino into your remote control. Xfinity Latino. In 22 million homes nationwide. Your connection to the best of Xfinity every week. Just say, Ash versus Evil Dead. In your X1 voice from life. Wow, it's incredible. Spinity Latino. Spinity Latino. Spinity Latino. Spinity. Besitos. Yes. Besitos. Okay. So that gives you an idea of what we do. Julie, back to you. You can keep that music going while I speak. There you go. And ladies and gentlemen, Julie Durow, please give us a big hand. So that's a little uh, peek of Xfinity Latino. That's our main project at Janicek Media that's been impacted um, by the coronavirus and our top priority for, um, you know, to keep going during this time. Um, so what you saw there was just little snippets of shows in the past. In a typical show, we have about seven segments, um, plus we create fillers and additional, um, additional segments on you know, on re per request uh, by our client of interviews, et cetera. So that all equals about 20 to 30 minutes um, each week. We deliver, um, <clears throat> I mean, that doesn't sound like a lot of content, but as you saw in that sizzle, it's actually pretty, uh, a pretty tight edit. And we are promoting, I would say on average, 15 titles, that's shows and movies. Um, along with original content that we create, which is uh, tips for the family, our family segment or hacks. And then we have sports news. Uh, and then we're also promoting and making graphics for a bunch of sports calendars, any, any kind of sports events that's relevant to our audience. So it's really just jam packed. It's, it's a ton of editing. Um, we've fine tuned this over the years. Um, we're probably, you know, we, we keep getting more and more efficient. But um, a lot goes into making one show. Uh, we're it used to be about a about a hundred hours of edit per week, and now yeah. we're down to about eighty. We've gotten it, it, that efficient. Yeah, we're down to eighty with with multiple um, editors. Though we're, we um, a lot of our editors are um, contract on a part time basis. So um, so it's really like a lot of moving pieces. Um, our source material, our file transfers, we're downloading content from 
multiple networks. I mean, too many to mention. We have um, hosted content from two different stages that we're downloading now, our source material. We download content from Getty and we, you know, get more stock images and footage and graphics and music. So, on so, a basis, so I'm sorry, Julie, just so mention how we get that to the tools we use. So we use, you know, like a Spera and things so people can use that kind of thing. Oh, we use a Spera. We use all different tools, honestly, depending on the network that's sending us content. Some, some we're getting content through FTPs. Some we're getting through, we transfer links. Um, I mean, we're literally downloading. Jared can speak better than this. I'll let him, him talk to this later. But I mean, a ton of content every week and they're coming from all different outlets. Um, our host materials coming through Aspera, but Aspera has multiple multiple um, products. So we have an Aspera that we deliver our show through and uh, we deliver VOD content through and that's, you know, they're all different types of Aspera. So really we are, we are getting content and delivering content almost like however we can, all, all digitally, um, you know, I guess, I, I would hope like most others, we no longer load stuff up on a drive and like mail it or walk it over to, uh, you know, operations. So that's, so that's good. Um, <clears throat> in our typical workflow, we are, um, where we edit Monday through Friday and deliver a show on Friday for the following Monday. So every Monday we have a new show that airs. And our typical workflow is Monday through Wednesday. Internally, we're working on all of the segments I mentioned. We are fine tuning them, getting all the materials, uh, getting them to as close of uh, a perfect cut as we can. And Wednesday night, we deliver a, a low res preview file um, through Dropbox for our client who resides in uh, Miami. He grabs those previews, takes a look at them, he writes his uh, revision notes. We take those notes and revise all the segments. It's usually not a lot. We're actually pretty close. We know kind of exactly, we're getting really good at this show that um, our revisions aren't too cumbersome, but we still take about a day to do all the revisions. And then on Friday, we are mastering the show, doing any final tweaks. We are transcoding the show through um, Elemental, a software that we have that, that makes our, our show to spec to two different platforms. One is for on air and one is for VOD and they're, they're two separate specs. And then we deliver through Aspera as Jim mentioned. Um, and beyond that, we're doing kind of all of this last minute, what we call filler content to fill up our schedule so it, it times out. So that can be anywhere from like an interview to an interview shout out to um, a free movies preview. So really on Fridays, uh, we're pretty hectic because we're, our client is timing out the show and he's saying, hey, we need five minutes. And so then we scramble and put last minute segments together. So that's always fun. And that's been kind of a hard thing to plan for. Um, <clears throat> so uh, did you want to say something, Jim? Just, uh, sorry, quickly talk about how we've pivoted. So that, that for folks watching, that kind of explains what we've done, um, you know, how we do our operations typically. We are kind of a centralized production unit. So we, like you, probably bring all your materials into one mass server. Ours is, is this big fiber controlled server, um, but we've had to pivot obviously. So, and Julie and Jared have mastered a way they're doing that. So maybe talk about how we communicate on a daily basis through yeah. Slack and then do our edits and things. So I think when, when this started, you know, we were, we were not early adopters. When coronavirus came about, we were still working at the office. And it really wasn't until one day at lunch, probably like three weeks ago, four, we four weeks ago, actually, that we were like, hey, this seems like it's getting pretty serious. What's going to happen if we can't get into our building? What's going to happen if we have to work from home? Or, you know, worse, you know, if some of us get sick. And that was the first conversation we've really ever had about pivoting to um, going remote. And you know, luckily we have Jared, who's like, okay, it, would, it won't be too hard, but there will be there will be some obstacles, um, and he'll get to those later. But I think you know, it went from that little sort of what if to basically three days later, like, okay, we need to do this now. We need to do it quick. We need to find a way to get all of our material in a way that we can access it and deliver this show. 
um, <clears throat> without pause. We've never missed a delivery, you know. Um, it wasn't, that was, that is not, you know, an option for us. So we had to move quickly. Um, the good thing is, is, you know, we were, we were already doing things. We already had things in place that kind of made us, you know, if not halfway there, close. And, and those are some of the things that Jim's talking about. You know, we were already working off these servers, shared servers. We had um, shared files. All of our media, you know, they were not on everyone's local drives. We were, we were sharing this content um, on an hourly basis. The way our show works is it's not like, you know, one of our editors gets a movie segment and that's what he does for the week. We are constantly passing around these project files and, hey, I did this part, you need to do this part, or we need a revision here. So in one day, an editor can literally touch all seven of our segments. And someone else working that same day can also touch all seven of them. So it's super important that we have file organization. And that's something that has honestly been a lot of work over the last couple of years, just trying to um, fine tune that and make it as efficient as possible. You know, the problem is, is we have new content coming in for the show, but we always have, you know, some older content um, that we might reuse over and over. So it was a matter of like, where do you put that stuff? Where do we put our new content? Where do we put our music tracks? Um, so that everyone is constantly working in the same way and no one's saving stuff to their desktop, um, which we've had, you know, years past, which has literally been a nightmare. And I think that's how, uh, you know, Jared lost his hair. As it would drive me crazy. Um, and, you know, so, so we had some things in place that were, we were already efficient. So, so our file organization and our working off the sand and just our, our typical like day to day, you know, um, SOPs, our standard operating procedures were, were already there. We weren't just kind of, working in our edit bays on our own thing. Um, we were really working as a team. Um, the other thing that we implemented a couple years ago was, you know, we work on Slack. We communicate about our segments and our show on Slack. And, you know, before Slack, we used something, we used Asana. And for, for me, that didn't work as well because, only because um, we are so fast paced. Like our show is really fast paced. We're there's constant changes throughout the day that we need to communicate and Asana just seemed too bulky, but Slack was something that we could make a channel for each segment and constantly be like, Oh, I just did this. I, you know, an editor could say, Hey, I just did this revision. It's, it's done. I'm out of the project, you know, et cetera. We could load our projects on there. We could load previews on there for me to watch. Um, having said that, you know, we have two shows under our belt. Um, we've delivered two shows now remotely. And I've realized that even just a little bit of FaceTime is so helpful um, through Slack. We, last week we posted just shy of 2000 messages on Slack for our show. 2000, that's a lot. That's a lot of communication as opposed to me walking to an editor and saying, hey, we need to do this because X, Y, Z, this show got canceled, you know, et cetera. We need to play, replace it with this. Explaining that through, through text, you know, through an instant messaging service is, it's a lot of work. Like I was exhausted. I was exhausted, you know, after two weeks of just constantly writing stuff down. So um, while I think, you know, working remotely is great for a lot of things, and I think people are, are pretty efficient and getting, you know, a lot of stuff done and possibly even a little faster. I think that that communication is still, is still pretty rough just with all of the small things. Um, I was constantly, you know, messaging people, um, and I know um, editors were as well. But having said that, those are the kind of things that, you know, really, really kind of helped us transition, you know, and not have to start from zero. Um, just pretty much doing everything through our servers already as it was. So, um, but luckily, you know, we didn't have to take that next step alone. Jared is really an expert at, you know, the architecture of our offices and our servers and everything we're doing. So he really was integral in making that transition and helping us uh, um, go remote. So Jared, do your thing. 
Yep, tell, right. us, tell us what you did, Jared, <laughs> so everybody can help. I'm going to start and I'm going to kind of talk about where we were um, before we went remote um, so you kind of have an idea of how we are working technically um, and then I'll let you know what we did. Um, so we have four, is it four, four edit stations um, and then kind of two um, producer stations all connected through a SAN network. And I think we have somewhere close to 100 uh, terabytes of storage. And we've kind of allocated those off into kind of a working um, volume. And then we also have kind of an archive volume. So we'll get in network content um, from the different channels and things that's all there. And it's stuff that we'll probably use over and over again. And then our weekly shows, it's that show is that show. And yes, sometimes we'll reuse pieces, but it's usually within itself. Um, so we kind of organize everything by week. And we'll go through and um, work in a weekly folder and each segment that we produce has its own project file. And we're using Adobe um, Premiere Pro. And basically the process through the week is um, we have Raquel who goes through and takes in the um, footage from our shoot and uh, roughs it into place um, doing a cut down, which is basically the straight read from the script. Um, and then she'll go through and actually take all the media that we're discussing. So for example, we have a segment called um, PTV um, and it's usually about current television shows. Um, so uh, we'll take those television shows, put them in there, and then the editor has all their content within that project to work with. And we'll start editing uh, from there. But what's great is an editor can work one day on one project and then maybe move on to another one and another editor can pick up and no matter what workstation he was at, he can continue working. Um, and that's the great thing about having the shared storage between us. Um, so then you know, we produce the show um, and deliver as Julie talked about, um, pretty straightforward process there uh, going through all that. Um, working remote, we have a whole new set of circumstances. We can't all be sharing this media. We have to send these files, some of them big. So we had to look at this completely differently. Um, so we still had our project files that we needed to share somehow. And so um, first thing we needed to do is transmit um, footage in these project files. So we, we got external drives and basically transferred everything within our weekly project to those drives. Um, and then we went from there um, and then took any media that we might think we might need and transferred it as well. So we kind of uh, looked a little bit into the future. But every week things come up, we need to make changes to some of the graphics that we do. Um, so that's where Slack kind of came in handy. We could transfer files through Slack. Um, and we also set up another um, way to get into our SAN through TeamViewer, which is like a screen sharing application. And so what that allowed us to do is we could actually log in like we are sitting at the computer and look at our SAN um, and actually see the files. And while sharing files that way isn't the fastest, it actually made it like we are still in the office and able to share these files um, through. So essentially we're building, you know, each editor um, would have to have their home edit station and kind of build it um, from scratch. Uh, but we are able to set up those drives. So most of that content was there already. Um, and then we use Slack again to transmit the project files back and forth, which actually was kind of neat at the end of the day or when we were done, um, we'd post them and then um, we could pull them down and make sure everything was linking. And honestly, we, it, was, it worked almost flawlessly. We had one issue with a missing font. Other than that, um, I have to say, I was really impressed with how that workflow um, went. So Jared, just to quickly interject, for those watching or who may have joined us late, it seems like the most valuable tools that we've deployed or had deployed that have helped us in this working remote thing is Slack for communication and then approvals back and forth, literally sending files where we can send video shorts and things, and then using Team Viewer to truly tap into like we're sitting right at our desktops at the office. Is that correct? Exactly, yeah. And Slack was good for a couple of reasons. I mean, just the communication um, standpoint, chatting back and forth, getting instant um, 
you know, communication, but also we are able to send files through Slack. Also screenshots. Um, I can't tell you how valuable, valuable it is to take a screenshot and then post it to Slack and say, hey, does this look okay? Um, and um, yeah, if a missing file, mu music files, we use an online music library. So sometimes we'll, that'll be like the end of an edit process. So we could post those to Slack and then download them uh, to finish the project as well. And, and then again, yeah, team viewer. And clients, Sorry. You, they can also have their clients join Slack, true. Isn't that true? So that if That's correct, yes. So yeah. that's great. So really easy communication to continue with your clients. Yeah, one of the advantages of Slack that we found is we'll do for each of our segments, create a channel. And because we have multiple editors working within these segments, um, all of the notes for that segment are put into the channel and then everybody can see it. So it's not quite, it's like a public uh, chat. So everyone can kind of see what's going on. Um, and you know, some of the issues that we ran into too is, I mean, like sports, when you know the virus started, everything was getting canceled. So things were changing on an hourly basis. We could see all of that kind of, and actually have a record to go back and look at, seeing um, what was going on with, with these segments. Great. So that all said, um, I don't know if you two have any kind of final little quick notes and then we'd open it up for, for questions for people. Um, what do you think? Any follow-up, Julie or Jared? Yeah, I'll just, I'll talk one, one quick bit about our delivery because I think it was kind of interesting doing it remotely. Um, so the normal process is we, because we're um, a Spanish language channel, we have to produce what's called a four channel. And the reason for that is the SAP, uh, the secondary audio. Um, even though we're in Spanish already, um, we have to deliver the, the SAP channel as well. So we have a interesting delivery process. Um, so we have to create what's called the four channel master, which is just a QuickTime file. It's a ProRes QuickTime file. But then we run that through the Elemental server, which encodes that to the Cable Labs MPEG spec that actually runs on cable. Um, and what we were actually able to do with the delivery, which is kind of neat, is actually um, output our four channel files onto our SAN. And since the SAN's connected through the network locally there, we could just use the screen sharing through TeamViewer to actually go through and drag those onto the elemental and let them encode them um, so we could deliver without actually physically having to be in the office, which I think was pretty cool. Um, yeah, that was amazing. I would love to... I would love to um, talk about that because in the past, um, every once in a while, for various reasons, you know, no fault of our own, you know, we would get an email or a call, you know, on a Sunday night from the operations team from Comcast saying, hey, we don't have this file that's supposed to go live on your Monday show tomorrow morning. And sure enough, I would always have to, you know, drive to the office, find the file, re-deliver it, you know, et cetera. Um, so it wasn't until these past two weeks that I've been able to do that remotely. And sure enough, um, the uh, operation said they were missing a file or it got deleted from the system. And because this was set in place, all I had to do was, you know, through TeamViewer, uh, log in and get to our SAN, find that four channel copy that Jared was talking about drop it in Elemental to make a new on-air uh, to spec copy and then deliver that via Aspera. So it was amazing. Like I was, I was so excited about that. You know, I've a lot of times this week I didn't, but a lot of times I've been at work on a Friday and I've just, just for safety, if I knew that there was no way I could get into the office, if they were missing something, I would load the entire show on a drive and bring it home with me um, just to have it just in case. Um, so this is, this is just, um, oh man, I mean, like we will always, you know, I, moving forward, even if we're back in the office, you know, we'll always use this because this is also allows us to make schedule changes. You know, if the client says, hey, um, this show got canceled, we need to air this instead, I can deliver it right away as opposed, if it's, if it's created, um, as opposed to going into the office and finding it and doing it that way. Um, so that's just been, that's, if, if there was like one thing that we'll move forward with, I would, I would say just continuing to use Team Viewer. Um, I, I think we'll do that uh, forever. Moving yeah. forward. <laughs> I would say too, just to folks um, watching, 
you know, I know that this is a tough time. We're all kind of weathering. Um, but to remember, just like Julie and, and our team has found that, you know, there's some tools we can use that we'll probably deploy for the rest of, you know, our existence. Uh, times like this are also great opportunities and they tend to be times when new things are born that kind of change the whole industry. And so keep a positive, you know, uh, keep yourself positive on that and keep looking for those kinds of opportunities. If you're very entrepreneurial, remember that during the writer's strike, some of us older folks remember that the writer strike went and basically writers walked off all shows. And this happened a number of years ago, a couple of decades ago, I think. And it actually is the genesis point of reality TV. Uh, that's exactly what created it. So I have no doubt that many of you sitting at home now are probably coming up with ideas that may have, you know, a valid thing that can suddenly become the new hit of the next generation. So um, stay positive as we get through this and realize that this is, you know, we can see this is an opportunity too. Anybody else or do we want to open it up for questions? I think Kelly? we have a question from Dustin here. Yeah, it looks like we've got a question. Go ahead, Dustin. So, hi, Dustin. Hi. Um, I, okay. I do have a question now. Were you filming your host segments yourself or were you actually receiving that from a network? Uh, no. So we filmed those in Miami. We used to film here in Denver and recently, uh, relocated those to Miami. Uh, but okay. we filmed them in Miami at the tele, at the Telemundo sound speakers. Oh, okay. Um, so did you, I don't know why am I? videos uh, disabled, but um, so now have you gone to a hostless, like a voiceover type of format since you can't uh, film your segments? Is that? We have not yet. So we film far enough in advance that okay. we're, this next week you see our, it, that actually went on the air, I guess this week, uh, we are still hosted. Uh, we're doing a slight reduced schedule coming up here for a couple weeks. We have actually a planned hiatus week going on next week. Uh, and then uh, after that, we will be doing um, a little bit of a reduction uh, and then going back into production on stage, we hope, around late April. Um, the one thing that we do have plans for is possibly, though, moving to where we you know, do a voiceover, like you suggest, uh, which would mean we'll take some of our existing stand-up opens and our elements that are generic in form, uh, use those for the tops of the show, and then all of our anchors have their own home voiceover recording studios. So they'll be able to, you know, record and send to us and we'll build the show from that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. It looks like we've got a question from Julie. Jared, did you see that? Yeah, I'm just reading it right now. Yeah. If you want to go ahead and read that. All right, so Julie says, do you recommend a consolidated delivery method? For example, a PDF, how to export stems, et cetera. But I also don't wanna call others on how to do their job. It just makes my job easier working through it thought or working in sound thought. So um, yeah, our, I mean, our delivery is kind of specific to what we need. Like I said, we have the four channel um, spec that we have to deliver. So basically, um, the, our process um, for delivery is pretty straightforward is we're actually, we're doing all of our audio work, um, adjusting levels and everything within Premiere and then just outputting a QuickTime um, file. Um, the only exception is we're exporting it with four channels of audio, which is basically two stereo channels of the same thing because it's the secondary audio profile for Spanish, even though both of them are in Spanish just for the cable carrier. So it's kind of a complicated thing, but there's nothing um, super um, specific with how we're doing that. Um, I don't know if that answers your question fully, but yeah, maybe do it. Maybe answer, talk to her. It sounds like she's talking about delivery of stems too. I mean, is there a consolidated way you can think of, Jared, if we were doing that? Yeah, um, it's so, I mean, it, it really kind of depends on how you need to deliver your files. Um, 
generally, you know, in, in the past, the way we've delivered stems when we needed to is just as um, separate audio files. Now, you know, these movie files too, you can have multiple channels within. Um, it really depends on what the spec is and what you need to get out there. Um, I can tell you a lot of the, the media that we get in now um, from the networks, especially when it comes to movies, we'll get, uh, I mean, up to, I don't know, 20 some audio channels on them. We'll have a stereo mix. We'll have a Spanish stereo mix. We'll have uh, um, sound and effects as a separate, separate channels, music as separate channels, all of that. I mean, it really depends on who it's coming from, but it's becoming more and more standard that we're seeing those uh, types of files, which is great for, for the post-production flow. Um, and Julie, if we didn't get your answer exactly what you want to, yeah. don't hesitate to type up or write us some more and we'll stay in contact. And that is for anybody too. Um, if you want more information or want to reach out to us, uh, you can send uh, a uh, email to info at I'm um, Happy to help if we can there. Um, and we'll route that to the right person in our team. Or you can follow us also on Twitter at Janicek Media. Um, Okay, Jared, you can keep going if you had anything else. All right. Well, so Raquel, our Raquel, um, has some recommend or wants us to give some recommendations for similar production companies to deal with this in hard times. Um, so, actually, looking at what we've done and looking at the tools that are out there, I can actually add some additional recommendations that I think might be useful to people. Um, there's some other video sharing services out there, something like Frame.io or there's another software platform called Axel. Um, and so these basically work where you have um, video from your um, studio, um, however you're set up there, that you can actually access online. So they make like proxy files. Um, with Frame.io, you can actually have the clients or the producers go in and add um, annotation, and the same thing with Axel as well, but annotations in the video. So you actually get notes within the video itself at the specific time code, which can be really useful. They're, they are paid um, solutions. So um, something for us to look at in the future, but um, it's something that you kind of have to set up ahead of time. So since this was kind of a spur of the moment thing, I think that Slack worked perfectly for this. Um, you don't have the granular um, capabilities with Slack, but uh, it, it's been a lifesaver. Um, the other thing that I think would be really helpful is there's a lot of cloud storage solutions out there that can be synced now. And we're talking about, you know, a lot of uh, media that needs to be synced, uh, depending on the size of the production, but some of these might be helpful, especially um, just trickle syncing over, um, you know, downtime, that this way is a good way to distribute media so all of the editors have it in remote locations. I think that could be very helpful to others in the future as well. What are some of those cloud storage things that you were you Can you name names? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's tons of stuff. Um, I mean, there, Dropbox, of course, is one. There's Box. There's, um, you could actually do your own solutions. There's things like QNAP servers or the Synology disk stations. Um, even um, I think Drobo still has a way that you can kind of sync between your different boxes. So there's different um, solutions out there. You kind of have to find well, what you need and what works best for you, how much you want to invest in it. Okay, good. And Julie, it looks like Julie has another question. Uh, how do you work remotely and talk work with someone who has issues doing their job? Thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one. Depends on what the issues are. Um, speaking of, I'll take that one. Okay, um, you take it, Julie. I think you know, in this situation, especially for us, where we are used to being on site, and we can check in with each other and and see where we are, or I can check in on editors and see how they're doing with the progress of an edit. Um, you know, going remote is is its own challenge, and I think you know we had with our team in an agreement that you're working from home, but you need to be online and using Slack and checking in. So, and, and not just, hey, I'm doing my shift at home, I'll send you something in eight hours, because right. I think no matter what, that always causes problem if someone's on the wrong track. Um, you know, we had, some, we had some segments to edit this last week or these last two weeks that we've never had to do before. Like we didn't have a particular, um, 
set format on because we had so many programming changes, you know, a, a lot of our job is promoting content for our viewers to watch and things were being changed, shows were being canceled, events were being canceled. So we had to, every day was something new. We were constantly changing out our show um, and creating new content with videos that we had our hosts record, um, just kind of spur of the moment from home to make new promo. So I think like the key is to just have that understanding um, at the beginning, say you need to be online, we need to be talking, uh, you know, I want to see where you're at. I want to, you know, it could be if, if it's someone who has an, has an issue, I, I guess, I don't know what that issue is, but um, we have a pretty tight team, but I can say, hey, I want to see something at one o'clock. I want to preview or, you know, what I do every once in a while, not because I necessarily, not because I have um, someone who's not doing their work, but again, just if it's new territory, I want to see a rough draft early on, or I want to see, I want to see your first, you know, 45 seconds of your edit just to make sure we're on the right track. And that happens all the time. So I think just having something in place like Slack, a way to communicate, you know, as opposed to, oh, I'm going to call you at noon, but having a, a, a way to constantly like chime in, hey, I just, I just got this information, the lower third needs to say this or whatever, or hey, the client has the new direction, don't do this. That's really important. I think it's really important when everyone's working on their, on their own, especially when you have deadlines, you know, we have, we have deadlines every week, we have to deliver a show. So we can't, we can't go rogue, honestly. <laughs> Good term. Um, and I think one of the things I like about Slack to comment to that too, is that when you keep Slack open, when you're working, it does pop up in the upper corner when someone makes a comment, if I'm not mistaken, right, Julie? That you can, you can kind of keep track that, of the conversation. Yeah. Live. yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, you know when something new um, is coming, is coming in so it's a good tool and slack is not the only one there's a there's a million well not a million but there's a lot of different services to choose from like i said i like slack because we move at a really fast pace and it's super easy you don't get bogged down into you know different project files and setting due dates like we know our due dates we know we know we got to deliver a show this friday so that's really useful for us for you know maybe another agency that has um like a, a longer edit period or, or, or production period, something, you know, a project that's going to take months, you know, maybe something like Asana would work better for you, um, where you're assigning people jobs and you're making sure that they're done. And then you're, you know, you're, you're more, you're project managing it. This is really just a communication tool for us that works well. Great. And Julie, it looks like you had another question. Speaking of clouds, uh, do you recommend paying extra money for extra space? Jared, do you want to take that? I mean, I guess if you need it. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's, it really depends on what you're looking for. Um, it, if you need the space, you need the space. So yeah, I mean, definitely buy it if you need it. If you're not going to use it, then, I mean, there are a lot of companies are offering a lot of um, accessibility for free these days. So you can kind of take advantage of that. Um, if, I, I think if it's something you're using all the time, definitely, you know, help them out, um, buy some space. Um, we actually, we're still in the free version of Slack um, because we don't have a need to upgrade uh, at this point. Um, and we're okay with that. If, if we get to that point, I think we will um, upgrade. But um, for now, I'm just, we're still, I mean, even sending video files back and forth, we're still okay on storage with the five gigabytes that they give us. Um, being that it's only preview files, but it's, it's been very nice. Yeah. Great. Um, does anyone else have questions or, um, yeah, any, any other questions? To, otherwise, we'll turn it over to Kelly. And uh, I want to say thank you to everybody watching. Really, again, uh, keep your head up. This is, we're all going to get through this. Kelly? Yeah, I actually did have a question for you guys. I'm just thinking a lot about students right now and how all of these classes were moved online. Um, and in particular, you know, film and studio production students. And I just wonder if you guys, to, to open it up a little more generally, have any advice for some of these uh, students who are now, they're still learning all of this uh, production stuff and now they have to pivot um, even more so um, just in their studies in general, but also in filmmaking and TV making. Um, you guys mentioned file organization earlier and I think organization is probably key. So maybe you can just speak to that for a couple minutes. Jared? Yeah, yeah. So um, 
because we're working with multiple editors on the same project and, and producers as well, we're all kind of accessing things. Organization is really important for us. Um, the way we structure our um, workflow, I mean, it's probably not going to work for everyone, but I'll kind of explain what, what we do and why we do it. Um, so we, we have a weekly show. So every week, basically, um, we have what's called the production share and every, there's a folder in that um, directory for every week. Um, and so within that week, we have folders set up for project files. We have source media. And so um, source media is going to be the media from the actual shoot of our hosts um, and any other media that's directly related to that week's show. Um, so that's organized there. But we also have like evergreen assets and like network media. So for example, we may promote a movie, um, let's just say Rocket Man. We've promoted, I think, four or five times now. So that kind of lives um, in a network media um, location that's elsewhere because we're going to use that again. Um, um, other things in the folder, we have graphics. Um, so we have weekly graphics. We have lower thirds for every show that we promote that we have to create each week. We also have recap graphics that we create, recapping all of the shows that we've talked about in our segments. So those graphics are kept in there. And then um, some music, sound effects, anything organized with that week, we kind of have a separate folder. So it's pretty obvious where all of that that stuff is. And then we also have a preview folder and a final exports folder. And so what's kind of great about um, the preview folder is we kind of just output different versions of our segments and we can kind of go back and see what's changed, track what's going on um, with these preview files. And they're just, you know, low res H.264 movies. But it kind of gives us a way to quickly go back and look at um, what's been done in the past. And this is really useful. Um, again, it's a weekly show, so it might be different, but if you're working on a feature or something um, where you can see different versions of cuts, it's so much faster than loading up project files. You can just, you know, launch them in your finder, scrub through the video real quick and see what you're looking for. Um, so that's, a, I think, really helpful to kind of keep a history of what you've done. Um, and also with uh, Adobe Premiere, the autosave files, um, I, we have everything set to five minutes. That's super important workflow too, because things do happen. We have crashes that we have to go back um, there. And then our final exports folder, it's always there. So in the future, if we ever have to go back to a file, that master file um, lives there and we always have that. So every week, every show is kind of contained within that folder structure for us. Um, and then all the evergreen assets are without the things that we may um, need to use again, uh, media-wise. So that's kind of how we've organized our structure. Um, like I said, you know, every, every project's a little bit different, but I think, I mean, any type of organization that you can give yourself, um, especially thinking that something's going to come back is going to really save you a lot of time in the future. And to, to add to that, maybe those of you who, you know, are in the student position or you don't have like a SAN or something like that, um, you know, if you're saving your material in the cloud, the same file structure is really important, you know, to, to maintain a uniform file structure with your cohorts who may be working from their homes or el elsewhere, even if it's just in the cloud is so important. Thank you. Definitely. Um, doesn't look like we have any more open questions. Do you guys have any last thoughts? Uh, anything that you guys want to leave with our viewers? I'll leave it to Julie and Jared. I already <laughs> said my question. Um, I just think, you know, I think this goes back to, to Dustin's question of what are you guys going to do, you know, if you don't have any more host, ho new hosted content. And I mean, this is, this is a big unknown, I think, for everyone. What, what are the next steps? And we're still trying to figure that out. And you know, as a, as We're thinking about puppet shows, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jim has, it, but you know, and we're, we're a creative agency. You know, we have, we have lots of suggestions. There's many ways to skin this cat. I know that we can figure out something. Ultimately it comes down to the client and what they want and how they want to represent, you know, this channel. Um, but it's, it's definitely chartering new territory. We have, you know, 
we are kind of waiting. It, it could be using new VO. It could be kind of faking um, segments using kind of generic host opens that we have from the past to make to make kind of a hybrid of a new show and an old show. Um, you know, and I think this is a time for us to experiment with these new things, experiment with new technologies. And I think that's, and softwares and, and services, and that's what students can be doing. They probably already have a leg up on this. I'm sure they're pretty well versed in a lot of the different softwares, but this is a great time to, to try things, to try file sharing, you know, the free versions, Team Viewer. we, you know, you can use a free version of that. Um, there's, there's a lot of things you can do um, for free. Um, so I think just, the more you have those skills, you know, under your belt, the better you're going to be when situations like this arrive. And so you're not panicking, like, how are we going to do this? We're going to have to shut down. We're going to have to, our channel's going to have to go black. I mean, that's, that's obviously like worst case scenario. So we're going to do everything in our power to make sure our channel doesn't go black and we still have content. We can still keep people hopefully, you know, employed and working and, and doing something. It might not be what we were doing, you know, a month ago, but, um, we're creative. This is our industry. We're going to, we're going to find, you know, solutions. I think that it's that problem solving that's really important right now. Yeah. yeah. Actually on that note, I did have one more question. Um, I don't know if this is under uh, your purview. I think so from uh, your st studio being in Miami, but a lot of new shows right now are having their film or their hosts film themselves from home. Um, is have there been any conversations about that and about having simple home setups where they can send them uh, their personal send you their personal videos? We have actually talked about that. Um, obviously, our client discretion would be up to you know the, the folks, the execs at Comcast, but we have actually talked about it. And I think this is a perfect example, Kelly, of how you know new things are born. It wouldn't surprise me at all if we start seeing more production like that, even after this whole mess is over with. Um, you know, we've seen the live music shows now, which actually looked pretty darn good. You know, we all know the tools are out there that you can do these streams now really pretty easily, even with switched content. Um, I think B&H has a switcher. I think we were looking at one not too long ago that's like $300. <laughs> and so... <laughs> You can it's literally awesome. <laughs> do a live switch stream, which is pretty cool. Even this website, you know, uh, uh, is doing its own automatic sw uh, switching of who's talking. Um, so I think, like you said, the technology is there. We're going to see things just like that happen. And yes, we have considered that. We just haven't decided yet what we're going to what we're going to do. Sure. But we won't, we won't be going black. We know that we're going <laughs> to the channel's going to live. Excellent. I've been enjoying a lot of the, the comedy specials with the silent backgrounds uh, yeah. <laughs> while these comedians are trying to do their thing. Um, well, th thank you. Thank you. I don't think I have any other questions. Okay. Yeah. I just want to say, and for the audience who's uh, still out there, I just wanted to thank Julie and Jared for being here. And Jim is going to be back. Jim is going to be back on Monday. And then we've got another one um, a week or two from now after that. So go back to Colorado or excuse me. Yeah. Coloradofilm.org slash webinar dash series to see all of the upcoming webinars. Yeah. To comment on that one on Monday, which yes. is um, just for people watching. So we've been following really closely what's going on with, you know, the Fed programs and the things that are called like pay, paycheck protection uh, or the different uh, uh, small business association benefits that can be extended that are being created for this crisis. So if you're struggling and if you're like, you know, you've lost more than 50% of your client base, things like that. This thing on Monday is a great thing to tune into because we're learning right along with you and we're talking to experts about what is there for people like us who are independent. Um, while we have a company, we know many of you are independent contractors um, and there are ways that uh, they're setting up to try to help people. So really valuable um, and yeah. we hope you'll join us. And thank you, Kelly and the, uh, Office of Film and Television for setting that up. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully we're going to be having uh, somebody from the uh, Colorado uh, Small Business Development Network as well joining us um, to answer some of those nitty gritty questions right along with you. So that should be a really useful one for the community. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Have a good rest uh, of your afternoon. Hey. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.